Hello there, I'm your host, Dan Rojas. And I'm standing next to our big satellite dish. Now you probably know that I started this project about a year ago. What I did was I took the Part C material and just applied it right to the metal mesh. The problem that I had was, even though the back of the Part C material was properly covered and protected with an enamel coat, the fact that moisture that we get here in Florida, Florida's probably the worst condition in the world. In fact, the camera that I'm talking to right now is fogging up a little bit because it's morning time, but every morning this is what we get. We get incredible amounts of dew and everything gets soaking wet. In fact, I've destroyed one camera that way. My laptop computer just went out because I went from a nice air-conditioned house outside in the morning to see something. It's done. So you have a lot to consider when you have uh, really bad environmental elements like that. So what I did was I have regular, these are just regular acrylic sheets. And I took a piece of acrylic, laid it down and outlined it. And then I took uh, the part A material that we have. Now part A, B, or C, they'll all work for this. The reason that they'll work is because you can back them to this. So instead of being just over this metal mesh, you're actually over this right here. So this stuff's been on for about a month and it hasn't lifted up in any place at all. So as long as the back does not get affected by it, you'll be fine. So what I'm gonna do is take you over and show you some other material that I have. And we're gonna um, go from there. I have some acrylic material. It's already mirrored and everything. It's ready to go. You basically just cut it. These are the large acrylic sheets that I talked to you about. If I peel this protective cover off, which I'm not gonna take it all off because I don't wanna scratch this up when I'm doing the project. You can see that it exposes a mirrored surface under there. Now these are really flimsy 1 8 inch material. You can get this up to a quarter inch. I prefer the thinner material because when it's cut down, the quarter inch is just way too rigid for any of the projects that we have. The first project that we're going to be doing is making a parabolic trough out of one of these 8 foot sheets. The second sheet we're going to be using for the satellite dish. Now for the trough, I have a parabolic dish that I'm going to be using as a reference for the parabolic curve and we're going to be making a long wooden frame, put this in and just bend the plastic sheet in there because it's flexible. We don't want to get into heating stuff up with thermoforming with this because that would be really complicated. You'd need a really large oven or a way to do it. Stuff's kind of tricky to work with. So for this we're just going to be using a parabolic shape. Now if you want to make your own parabolic shape, I have on my website, somebody sent me a really great Word document that enables you to basically plug in the focal length that you want, the diameter of your parabolic dish. It's got all kinds of formulas to it. It's really cool. I've got that where you can actually download it right off of our website. There's also a way that you can make a parabolic curve using gravity. With a lot of our videos, we try to get to a shape or get our project going as simply as possible without being overly technical with it. Now, getting all the dimensions for a parabolic shape is probably the best, most accurate way to get it. There are simpler ways of doing it. Now, the first thing that you want to make sure that you do is start with the material, the length of your project. These are, I have two screws put here. I'm not sure if they're going to show up on the camera, but there's two screws put in and you Let's say you have a four foot piece of material. You don't want to put these four foot apart because you're going to run short on material. So you get your piece of material and we're just going to guesstimate what this is right now. But by pulling this down, there's two ways of doing this. If you force this down by the edges, you end up with a spherical shape. Now that will work. That's what we use for the parabolic reflectors that we made out of the PVC pipe. That's actually a spherical shape. It's not a true parabolic curve. If you want to get closer to the parabolic curve, now I say that with the solar projects that we do, the goal is to just have as much light get on the pipe. For Fresnel lenses, for the other parabolic mirrors where you're using it to melt metals or to melt glass, you want it to be as perfect as possible. That way all that light's in that one spot reach temperatures of 3,000 degrees. For heating water or boiling water, that doesn't do you much good to have that much power there because a lot of it's lost in the atmosphere. So you're going to widen that focal point anyway. So what we're going to do is just get close with this and I'll show you a couple simple ways of doing it. We're going to do, by pulling it right in the center, 
you're going to notice that the edges kind of flange out and this represents more of a parabolic shape versus a spherical shape. Again, if we touch the sides, spherical, parabolic. Now, so what you do, once you have this, you hold it in place, place the screw right there. To hold it, now you have your shape. Now what you do is you take a little bit of black spray paint, Mist it along your material like that. Now I'm going to do this quick since you should just let this dry, but since we're kind of in a hurry. And there you have a parabolic shape that you can actually cut with a jigsaw or uh, a table saw if you're good using some techniques. But this would be the mold that you make. Now this would be one piece of plywood you can do this several times. That's one way of doing it and it works really good. Another way is to use gravity in a piece of string. All right, I have two screws in the wall that are just about the same height and what we're going to be doing is using gravity for this. Now I'm doing a bicycle chain because it's heavier. You want to use a very flexible piece of material for this. That way you're not um, uh, have some ripples to deal with and that sort of thing if you use dense material. Now, if you want to shorten the focal length, you put it down like that because this creates a deeper trough right there. If you want to lengthen the focal length so that it's higher up, you go like that. Now, this is not really a parabolic shape. This is what's considered, as a friend of mine, Rob, pointed out, a catenary shape. This is what any chains and parks will have, any bridges, anything that's hanging will have this shape. It's very, very close to a parabolic shape, and for our solar needs, since we're not optical telescope people for this. This should work very well. Actually, this does work very well. So this is probably the best way to do it. Now, I would take spray paint and, you know, if you, if you put a piece of cardboard up, set your material there, drill it in the wall, boom, and you got your mold. It's pretty simple to do. Okay, I have two screws put up here in the wall. I have two screws put in the wall, and I'm going to be using a bicycle chain for this demonstration. Normally, you would use a piece of rope. Um, I'm doing this because it, it'll show up better on camera. What's wrong with this chain all of a sudden? Shape that I'm going to be caught with. I have a parabolic shape that I'm going I have a parabolic shape that I'm... I have a parabolic shape that I'm going What is wrong with me?